Welcome to this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, where we cover the new features in Google Apps that have rolled out over the last month. Hey there, admins. I'm Barry with the Google for Work training team. Yes, I'm back, and I'll be walking you through the March updates. Let's take a look at our agenda. First, we'll start with our headline news, then look at mobile updates, such as mobile device management and Android for Work releases, Next, we'll talk about the latest general admin updates, some new features in the admin console, and finally, look at improvements to Drive, such as sharing and the security settings. We'll start with our headline news. This is a final reminder that the deprecation period for older Google Apps admin APIs is coming to an end. As of April 20th, 2015, we'll discontinue these deprecated APIs. What that means is, any calls to these APIs and any features in your application that depend on them will not work after April 20th, 2015. Now, as a result of the APIs being deprecated, you must update to the latest versions of GADS, GAPS, and GAMI if you're running any older versions of these tools. I do realize that not all customers are using these tools, but if you are, you must upgrade to the latest versions by April 20th, 2015. For Google Apps Directory Sync, that's version 4.0.3. For Google Apps Password Sync, it's version 1.3. And for Google Apps Migration for Microsoft Exchange, it's version 4.1. Oh, and by the way, another reminder, support for Google Apps Connector for BlackBerry Enterprise Server, that ended on March 5, 2015. If you were using that connector, I'm sure you're aware of this by now. Oh, wow, I forgot. Today is the five-year anniversary of What's New for Apps Admins. This is fantastic. Thank it you. Is. Well, you know, that's enough silly stuff. Let's get back to the show. Now let's look at some mobile updates. In February, we announced the Android for Work program, which helps businesses bring more devices to work by securing, managing, and innovating on the Android platform. Android for Work is an enterprise mobility management, or EMM, platform that lets companies deliver a secure and rich mobile experience to their employees. With Android for Work, you can create dedicated work and personal profiles, so work data is safe and personal information stays private. It also provides more granular control of Android devices, a framework for mobile application management via Google Play for Work, and a new layer of separation for work-related applications. Now Google Apps Mobile Management is ready for you to take full advantage of Android for Work. Companies have the choice of using either a third-party EMM solution or the native Google Apps Mobile Management. But remember, Google offers Google Apps Mobile Management as an out-of-the-box, or as I call it, an out-of-the-cloud Android for Work solution at no extra cost as it's included with Google Apps so that you have a complete collaboration platform and security solution. The solution lets Google Apps for Work administrators access EMM functionality in the admin console that expands their current device management capabilities. If you're ready to use the extra functionality of Android for Work with Google Apps Mobile Management, the super administrator for your domain must enable Android for Work from the Google Apps admin console. Let's see how to do this. While signed in as a super admin, go to the dashboard of your admin console. In the sidebar, under Common Tasks, click Get More Apps and Services. Click Add It Now under Android for Work. And under Android for Work, accept the Terms and Services Agreement. Next, under Security, click Show More and Android for Work Settings. Then click Generate Token. This EMM token is a string of characters that EMM providers can use to connect their Android for Work solution to the Google account. If you're using a third-party EMM solution, we would take this token and put it there. However, since we're using the native Google Apps Mobile Management, we need to authorize Google Admin Console to be our EMM provider. Copy the token. Next, go back to the Device Management section. And under Mobile Settings, select Set up Android for Work. 
and paste the token. Click Save Changes. And this establishes Google Apps for Work as your EMM provider. So there you have it. In a few simple steps, we've enabled Android for Work for our domain and then set up Google Apps Mobile Management to be our EMM provider. Now we can take advantage of all the extra settings and functionality that provides. For more information on the new settings, see Configure Mobile Device Settings article in the Help Center. Another update related to mobile management is unified network management across devices. Now Google Apps admins can define and push networks to mobile, Chromebook, and Chromebox for meetings devices from a single interface. Previously, admins had to configure the same network in multiple places to make it available to different device types. With this update, we removed the redundant network configuration points. Let's see how this looks in the admin console. To access the new settings interface, select Device Management. Here you can see any devices you've configured for your domain. On the left, in the Settings section, you can see the link for Network. When you click here, you see you can now set up Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and VPN networks for managed devices all in one place. You can enforce the same network settings for your entire organization or enforce specific network settings for different organizational units. Let's look at an example by adding a Wi-Fi network configuration. Click Wi-Fi, and then you can choose which organization you want to apply the settings to. When you click Add, config, add Wi-Fi, you can create a name, service set identifier, whether to automatically connect, the security type, and of course entering the passphrase for the security, whether there's any proxy settings, and also restrict to this Wi-Fi network by platform. So for example, this network interface could be for my mobile devices only and not my Chromebooks, or maybe also my Chromebooks, and also whether you're applying this to the network by users or by devices. When done, click Add. These network management settings are available to all Google Apps for work, education, nonprofits, and government customers. Oh yeah, and also, if you want links to any of the updates or Help Center articles, just check out the links below the presentation slides. Now let's take a look at some admin updates. Starting with simpler deployment of two-step verification. So we've improved the enrollment and enforcement process for two-step verification for Google Apps. Admins can now set an enforcement date in the future, giving users a monitor period of time to enroll. Users will be prompted to enroll when they sign in and also will receive email reminders if they haven't enrolled before the enforcement date. Let's see how this looks in the admin console. From the dashboard, select Security, then click Basic Settings. Scroll down and you can click Go to Advanced Settings to enforce two-step verification. You can select the organizational unit that you want to enforce the policy. Remember that Policies are inherited down the tree structure, so I'm going to select this suborg. And notice that in addition to having you turn off enforcement or turning it on for now, I can now turn it on for an enforcement from a particular date. And I'm going to select next Monday and click Save Changes. So users in this org, and if there's any suborgs, will be prompted to enroll in two step verification each time they sign into Google Apps. Let's look at the user's experience. So let's look at our user, Betty, who's in the enforcement organization. See how she's reminded when she tries to sign into Google Apps that she needs to enroll, or she can choose to do this later. When she selects Enroll, it will start her with the setup process for two-step verification. We highly encourage all Apps customers to take advantage of the simplified setup process and add an extra level of security protection by implementing two-step verification for their domains. With this next admin update, we're providing greater mail flow transparency with email alerts. These alerts can be managed by admins in the admin console and will trigger email notifications to super admins or to other designated recipients around the following potential mail failures, exchange journaling failure, smart host failure, and TLS failure. Let's see how this looks in the admin console. From the dashboard, select Reports, then click Manage Alerts. 
When I scroll down, I can see the new email alerts. You can change the status for any of the alerts from off to on. And if you click the alert, you can add or change recipients. In my example, I've turned on TLS failure alerts, and I'm going to add the user Sarah as one of the recipients. Notice the autocomplete functionality here, and then I click Save. Yes, it's that simple. So why would you even use this feature? Well, even though email nearly always works flawlessly with Google Apps, when something doesn't work, however, it's not always clear if there was even a problem once it's been identified. It can be difficult to determine the root cause as well. So for our customers who are using TLS, Smart Hosts, or Exchange Journaling, you can turn on these alerts and be notified if anything breaks, rather than having to wait for a user to tell you they're missing email and potentially it's too late. Our next admin update provides feature parity for multi-domain Google Apps instances. That's a fancy way of saying we're extending several key features to secondary domains. They are custom app URLs, which are short URLs to services such as mail.yourdomain.com, web address mapping. Now your Google Sites can appear under custom URLs for all of your domains, such as hr.yourdomain.com, and group renaming. So if you created a Google group in a primary domain, you can easily move it to a secondary domain. Let's see how this looks in the admin console. From the dashboard, select Company Profile, then select Custom URLs. I'll scroll down a little bit. And prior to this update, you could only create a custom URL for your primary domain. Notice I can now select any of my other domains as well to create custom URLs. I know that our large customers who manage multiple domains using the same Google Apps account are very excited about these improvements for their multiple domains. Next, let's take a look at some Drive updates. The first is, you can now share Drive links for viewing outside of your domain, no sign-in required. So when it comes to sharing Google Drive content outside of your domain, like giving inventory lists to your caterer or last-minute logos to your design agency, you want to make sure people can see it right away, whether they use Drive or not. With this update, admins can now have the option to allow Drive content to be viewed by recipients outside of their domain without having them sign in with a Google Apps account. Now you can share with any email address and they'll be able to view the files you share. This feature is, by default is off. It can be enabled in the admin console under Apps, Google Apps Drive, Share Settings, and under Share Options, choose Allow External Users to Preview File Without Google Sign-In. People with the sharing invitation can view the file in a read-only preview mode without needing to sign into the Google Apps account. They can forward the invitation to other people who can also view the file. If the file was shared with edit or comment access, anyone with the sharing invitation will still need to sign into a Google Apps account before they can edit or comment on the file. The next Drive update is about the enhanced add-on experience for Google Apps admins. Last year, we launched add-ons, tools created by developer partners that provide even more helpful features in your docs, sheets, and forms. Previously, the ability to install add-ons was controlled centrally by admins in the admin console, but users retain ultimate control of choosing which individual add-ons to install or remove. This month, we released a couple of updates to add-ons. First off, developers can now choose to make their add-ons for docs, sheets, and forms available for installation across the entire domain, which automatically creates a Google Apps Marketplace listing that is easy for customers to find. Admins can then install these handy add-ons for the whole organization using just a couple of clicks. Admins will continue to have a Disable Add-ons option for their users, but they can also whitelist add-ons via the Google Apps Marketplace for their entire domain or a specific team. This gives admins more consistent control over which add-ons are used in their organization. Keep in mind that it'll take some time for add-on developers to publish their apps for domain-wide installation, so you may not find all your favorite add-ons in the Apps Marketplace just yet. Also keep in mind this update won't impact existing add-on installation settings. 
And finally, we have some Drive updates only available for Google Drive for Work and Google Apps for Education customers. This is the ability to set Google Drive sharing settings by organizational unit. Different departments have different needs when it comes to sharing content outside of your domain. You might, for example, have a research department that needs to keep information confidential and a sales team that needs to share presentations with their clients. With this update, admins can now have the flexibility to choose drive sharing permissions based on organizational units, just as you currently can with other apps like Gmail and Calendar. This is extremely powerful. But remember, this update is available only for Google Drive for Work and Google Apps for Education customers. And lastly, we want you to stay informed. If you're looking for a full rundown of all the features released last month, then check out the Google Apps release calendar, where you can see the date and type for each release. Or alternatively, check out the What's New in Google Apps newsletter for all the updates and for more info on what they mean. You can find this newsletter on the What's New page above the release calendar or in the link below. Also remember, if you want links to any of the updates or Help Center articles, just check out the links below the presentation slides. So that's it from us this month. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments and questions below. This has been What's New for Apps Admins, March 2015 edition. Thanks, and catch you all next month.